Let's see how to find the size of a binary tree. By size we mean the number of nodes that are in the tree. So for example with this tree the size would be 7 because we have 7 nodes 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7. To find this, the size is pretty straightforward. All we do is we count the root node, so 1, and then we add the size of the last subtree plus the size of the right subtree. So it's a recursive way of computing the size. So let's see how this would actually work out. So we would start at the root node, and then what we do, we would go and determine what is the size of the left subtree. So we call this function recursively passing in as root 2. Again, we would move to the left. We have 4. And then we 4 tries to get the size of the left subtree. But because there is nothing there, it gets a 0 from the left. And then it tries to get the size of the right subtree, where it also gets a 0. So it will be 1, the size of the root, so plus 0 plus 0, so it's 1. So 4 will return a 1 to the 2. Then the 2 goes to the right. Again, 5 from the left gets 0, from the right gets 0, so it does 1 plus 0 plus 0, so it returns 1. So once 2 has the size of the left subtree, the size of the right subtree simply does the size of the left subtree plus the size of the right subtree plus 1. So that's going to be 3, and it will return the 3. Then the 1 goes to find out what is the size of the right subtree. So we have root 3, it asks what is the size of the left subtree, and because there's nothing there, it gets back a 0. Then it goes asks what is the size of the right subtree. So here we have 6, 6 goes to the left, 7 goes to the left, gets a 0, goes to the right, gets a 0, and so it returns 1 plus 0 plus 0, so it's 1. 6 now goes to the right and gets a 0, so it returns 1 plus 0 plus 1, so it's 2. And 3 gets a 2 from the right, so it now returns 0 plus 2 plus 1, so it's 3. And now 1 has both the size of the left subtree and the size of the right subtree, so it returns 1 plus 3 plus 3, which is 7, which indeed is the size of this binary tree. Let's see how to implement this. So we have a function called size which takes address to the root node and returns the size in integer. So the first thing to do is to check for the base case where the root is null, which indicates that the tree is empty, so the size is 0. So if root is null, returns 0. But if root is not null, then as we saw, what we need to do is to return 1 for the root node plus the size of the left subtree plus the size of the right subtree. So we would return 1 plus the size of root left plus the size of root right. That's the whole function. Let's verify that it works with an example. So again, we have the same tree we've seen before, and we call our function size passing in the root, which is 1. So it's not null. So what we do, we return 1 plus the size of the left. So we call this function recursively passing in root left. The left of 1 is 2. So now we have with root 2. Again, it's not null, so we return 1 plus the size of root left. The left of 2 is 4. So again, we call this function with 4. It's not null, so we return again 1 plus the size of root left. The left of 4 this time is null. So when we check this condition, root equals to null, it is true, so we return 0. So 4 gets a 0 from size of the left, so left is 0. Then it goes and calls this function passing in root right, so the right of 4 is also null. So we again hit this base case and we get a 0 here. So 4 would return 1 
plus size of left, which was zero, and size of right, which was zero, so it's one. And four was the left of two, so left of two gets one. Once left of two returns, we need to go to the right of two. The right of two is five. So we call again this function recursively, passing in five as root. Now again, five is not null, and so what we do, we call size of the left. The left of five is null, so this size is zero because we had the base case. Then we call size of right. The right of five is also null, so again we had this base case, and this also is zero. So five returns, so this is zero and zero for the five. So five returns one plus zero plus zero, which is one. So two gets from its right a one. And at this point, once the right of two returns, two returns one plus the size of left, which is one, plus the size of right, which is one, so it's three. And two was the left of one, so the left of one gets a three. And once the left of one returns, ones go on to find what is the size of the right. So the right of one is three, so we call again this function with a three. It's not null, so what we return is one plus the size of the left. The left of three is null, so we hit the space case. So this will be zero. Then we go on to find what is the size of the right of three. The right of three is six, so we call this function with the six. It's not null, so we return one plus the size of the left. The left of six is seven. Again, it's not null, so we return one plus the size of the left. The left of seven is null, so we get a zero. And the size of the right of seven is also null. The size is also zero because the right of seven is null. So seven returns one plus zero plus zero, which is one. And seven was the left of six. Once the left of six returns, six goes on to try to find out what is the size of the right. This time the right of six is null, so we hit the base case and this returns zero. So six returns one plus one plus zero, which is two. And six was the right of three, so the right of three gets a two. So once the right of three returns, three returns one plus the size of left, which is zero, and size of right, which is two, so it returns a three. And this was the right of one, so the right of one gets a three. And once the right of one returns, one returns one plus the size of left, which is three, plus the size of right, which is three, so seven. Which indeed is the size of this tree. Let's analyze the time complexity. We will end up here once for every node, since every node contributes one to the count. And because every time we end up here, we do two calls one to the left and one to the right, this means that the total number of calls will be 2n. N times is when we end up here and we do a constant amount of work, so that's all of n work. And the remaining n times we hit the base case. So that's also all of n. This means that the time complexity is all of n. Let's analyze the space complexity. Because we have a function that calls itself recursively, the space complexity will depend on how big will the call stack grow. And since every call we move either to the left or to the right, so we go one level deeper, and we only start returning and going back once we hit the leaf node, the space complexity will be of h, where h is the height of the tree.